Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, and we do so in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. Greetings and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel that scattered abroad, and to you Gentile nations that are mindful of the Most High's laws. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Um, today, we won't, get, we won't get online, we're going to do a lesson pertaining to falsehood and and really dig into the scriptures and seeing what the scripture says. So the title of the lesson is Behold, I have foretold you all things. So don't be deceived at, at, at doctrines and traditions of men and people come in with heresies and trying to bring a different doctrine or traditions of men and not the gospels or not the book, right? So we're going to start off in, to, in the book of Luke, chapter 8, and verse uh, 17. Bring that out for me. I... This is Luke, chapter 8, verse 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known. So, so, like, so it's basically saying that it, there's no secret that would not be made manifest and, no, and, and there's nothing that is hidden that should not be made known. And this is one thing that we have to understand. The Most High has gave us instructions on how to walk, how to live our life, what we're supposed to believe in, what we're supposed to be doing in this particular dispensation of time. But what we have to do, we have to read the book for ourselves. There's particular scriptures that is put out there for us to understand. The scripture says, study to show thyself approved. That scripture is put there for a very good reason. Hey, Shalom, Miguel, Shabbat Shalom to you, King. That, that scripture is put there for a specific reason that we have to make this gospel known to ourselves. Yet the Most High is not going to have that intimate walk with you. If you do not, if you refuse to read, but you listen to a man every single Shabbat, every single Sabbath, wherever, however way you do it. Good, I can finish up with that. And come abroad, take heed, therefore, how ye hear, for whosoever has to him shall be given, and whosoever has not. From him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. And how is it going to be taken from you? It's going to be taken from you because you're going to be caught up in doctrines and traditions of men. If you don't obtain this word for yourself, it's very, it's a very good chance that you can be deceived with doctrines and traditions of men. All right, I, I want you to drop that and, and jump over to the book of Mark, chapter 13. And I want you to read verse 23. Mark 13. Verse 23, Baba Shah. And you got it, read it. This is Luke chapter 13. Mark. Oh, Mark chapter 13. Verse what? 30, 30, 23. Verse 23, sorry. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things, but in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. So the Most High says, take heed, or Yahweh shot, read, put, put the book up in the air. Let me see who's reading. So we understand that the red letter is all Yahweh shot or Jesus Christ, whoever you want to call him, right? But we have to understand, he says, I have foretold you all things. I have foretold you all things, right? So there's no there's no reason for us to be deceived. Hey, good morning, cuz. There's no reason for us to be deceived with doctrines and traditions of man. So we have to check this man and every other man out in the book. And, it, and we, we, we cannot trim our ways to seek love. If somebody has gone off to the, according to the scriptures and you correct them and they don't want to change their ways, the most high tells them, give me Mark, so I can give me uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 17. So we have to deal with this. These are, these are the, the scriptures that we refuse to deal with, right? 
We refuse to take heed to the voice of Amashiach Yahabashah. This is Romans chapter uh, um, uh, 16, verse 17. All right. This is Luke chapter 16. Romans. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division. Sloppy. He says, mark them which cause division. So with that, when you put a mark on somebody, you're identifying them as a person that teaches false doctrine or a person that's gone off. He said, mark them which cause division. Come on. In offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. So we're ordered to avoid the brothers and the sisters that is going off, that is teaching false doctrine, that's not contrary to the scriptures. And this is what we do. We, we connect ourselves with everybody and thinking that everybody is our brethren. But we have to understand that there is weak that is sown amongst the tear. And if we do not have the understanding of the scriptures to be at least be able to abide by what the scriptures it says, then we are the ones that is receiving the mark. Right? Verse 18. Verse 18. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, all right. Come on, um, jump over to the book of John. Chapter 14. The book of John, chapter 14. And I want you to read verses 27 and 28. John 14, 27, 28. This is John 14, 27 and 28. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give this, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So we have to understand, Yahawashai, or Christ, has called us to peace, right? Because if we know the prophecies, we know the destruction that's going to come off, we understand what's going on around us, then we, why are we troubled in our spirit? Right. I'm not telling I'm not saying not to prepare because there's not a war. There was never a famine that took place that Israel did not have to be hands on. Right. So what we have to do is we have to prepare ourselves, but also we have to walk in peace. Right. Go ahead. Verse 28. Ye have heard how I say unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I say, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. So again, it's about foretelling us all things, and Christ has given us in these last days peace. You can see the anxiety that's going on with our people, and the anxiety that's going on in the so-called body of, 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 of Israel, as well as the church. I don't see peace there. I see anxiety. I see frustration. I see hatred, right? How can you hate a brother or a sister if you have not got the word for yourself, if you have not got yourself together? That's the first key to the oracles of the Most High, getting yourself in order, repenting, right? Jump over to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians. Chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 9. This is Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 9. Take your time. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto the God. Unto God. So we have to understand this. Our request, we, the only way that our requests is going to be made known to the Most High is through our, our obedience. If our obedience don't line up with what we ask for the Father, we won't receive nothing from the Father, right? So we have to get these scriptures. We have to utilize these scriptures and do what it says to do and apply it to our lives, right? And apply it to our circumstances, Go ahead. Verse 7. 
And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we said, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Hamashiach Yahabashah. Right? The peace. This is another, again, peace, peace, peace. We're screaming peace. The, the Bible is screaming peace. Not saying that there's going to be peace in the earth, but it should be peace in your inner man because you understand the prophecies and you understand what's going on nowadays. So our job is to be patient. And when the people that don't understand the scriptures look upon, they should be able to see you steadfast, strong in the, in the word, right? Go ahead. Uh. Is a Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think of these things. Come, come, come. Powerful, powerful. All right. I from now, I want you to jump over to the book of John, chapter 16, and pick it up at verse 31. And I want you to read down to verse 33. So John 16, 31 to 33. It says, Jesus answered them, do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Shalaki. So it says, Behold, the hour cometh, and yea, it is now. What is he talking about? Is he talking about Old Testament, or is he talking about right now? In this dispensation of time, watch. It's talking about after he went to the Father, and and there's a scatter, and there's a separation that's going to take place, right? It says, "Behold, the hour cometh, yea, and is now, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me." Come on. Verse thirty-three. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You hear that? So the tribulation and, and everything that's gone on, he says, he says, these things I have spoken unto you, and in me ye might have peace, right? You might have peace. In the world, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So this is what the Mashiach, the Hawashai, he was telling his disciples before he left, that listen, all this stuff is going to come upon you. You have to be steadfast in what I've taught you. Don't be moved. The people that is around you that has a false doctrine, a false uh, a sense of understanding, if they do not want to be reproved, you mark them with a mark. And you separate yourself from them, right? Every brother, all Israel is not Israel, right? So we can't, just because they brand or burnish the name of Israel, connect with them people, right? We have to try the spirit to see where they are most high. Let me get that real quick. Uh, jump over to John. So like your first John chapter four and read verse one. This is John, 1 John, chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. We don't do that nowadays. We connect with everybody, right? We got all types of different doctrines in our spirits and stuff like that, and we're too afraid to... We can rebuke everybody in the streets, but when it comes down to your brethren, 
You refuse to rebuke your brethren because they make you look good. You look good standing in your, in, 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 um, in, in, in the streets in the, in, in the course of comp compress, as it says. You like to make the, the, the borders of your garments and your phylacteries. You look real good. But when it comes down to the spirit, the spirit is, uh, is a bunch of dead man's bones, right? Because we refuse to correct the people because they agree with certain things that we deal with, right? But the most high sees that. The most high is not pleased with that. You know that these people are wicked or some people are wicked, but you refuse to separate yourself from them because it makes your congregation or makes your camp look real small. Come on, somebody. We got to we got to deal. We have to deal with this in Israel because the Hasidim or this Antichrist that's coming, that's already working right now. And it's going to cause a lot of people to go astray. Because we're following after man and not after the scriptures. Right? All right. From there, I want you to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 26. The book of Isaiah, chapter 26. You're not going to have peace if you continue to continue to surround yourself with devils. You're not going to have peace if you continue to surround yourself with tares. Right? Remember. The road to righteousness is a very narrow road. You got Isaiah 26, uh, verses 2 and two through 4. This is Isaiah chapter 26, 2 through 4. Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. Though will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he truthes in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord, Jehovah, is everlasting strength, for the bringest down them that dwell on high, the lofty city, he layeth it low. He layeth it low, even to the ground, he brings it even to the dust. So we, 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 we really have to understand this. That the Most High is going to tear that down. The Most High is going to tear the destruction of the people that's, contra that's, that's going contrary. How dare some of us brothers out there tell somebody that they're going to go, go to hell, right? Because there's some things that a lot of us preach that we don't actually live ourselves, Right? We live it in front of we live it in front of our, our our camp brothers and sisters, but when it comes down to honoring your brethren and being and being in true brotherhood, you, you you're not going to correct your brothers because you want don't want to offend your brother because if you offend your brothers you may lose a member to congregation, right? The Most High is not dealing with that foolishness, right? But at the end of the day, if you separate yourself. From the things and the people and the place, you will have peace in your life. You will be able to put your household in order, right? This is what this is what we need to do. Focus on what's around you, meaning your immediate family first, the people that lives in your household. Get that in order first. Once you get that in order, then you can go and preach to the nations. If that's not in order and you're preaching to the nations, you are a hypocrite. And the Most High is not dealing with you, and you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have to give an account for that. Yes, brothers, you're gonna have to give an account why your wife is wicked, why your children is wicked, why your children don't want to obey or don't want to obey you, but you out there yelling at somebody else's uh, um, um, daughter and somebody else's brother, but your own household is suffering. Get yourself together, all right. Um, Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9, 6, and, six through 6 and 7, verse 6 and 7. Isaiah 9, 6 through 6 and 7. All right. This is Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, 
counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. So what shall be upon his shoulders? What did it say it's supposed to be upon his shoulders? And his, oh. Um, the scriptures say, for, for unto us a child is born, unto us, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. It shall be upon his shoulders and nobody else. Anybody that tried to build something on another foundation that is not of Christ is a antichrist, right? The government is supposed to be upon his shoulders, right? Go ahead, verse 7. Of the increase. Salaki. It says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be, be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Yah, an Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's why it's not going to be no peace there. That's why it's not going to be no peace in certain congregations because the, the, the shoulders is the weight is not on it, um, the shoulders of Hamas Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. I Verse 7 of the increase of his government and peace. The increase of whose government? His government. No, Israel, uh, 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 somebody else's government. His government. Go ahead. And peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. I gotta <laughs> see this is this is the, the manipulation that takes place in Israel. And, and and it's starting to get it's starting to get sickening to the stomach, right? And I can't understand anybody that's stuck in traditional traditionalism. And stuck in traditions of man, they can't see these scriptures, right? They just follow whatever, whatever somebody else say to them. But let me read this again. It says, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David. So it's talking about a time when this particular government is supposed to be constructed, right? And upon his kingdom, what kingdom is it talking about? It's talking about the millennium, meaning the Lord's day, that thousand year reign is when, when it's supposed to take place, right? And, or, and order it and establish it, establish what does, what does establish it? Let's, let's use proper grammar. You understand what I'm saying? Establishing meaning he's starting something. He's erecting it. It's coming to fruition. That's what it means, right? So it's talking about this government of Christ that's going to come upon, that's going to come into fruition when he comes on his day, during a, during a millennium time period, when Hamashiach Yehoshai is reigning with his elect for the thousand year reign, the thousand year period. But we don't understand that because we refuse to read the scriptures and we let men just talk into our spirit, right? But it says, in order to establish it in judgment and just from henceforth forever and ever. The zeal of thy Adonai of hosts will perform this. He will perform this. Not us. Not who we think that we're supposed to be. Right? All right. I, from there, actually stay in the book of Isaiah. Jump over, jump over to the book, uh, um, Isaiah chapter um, 11. And you got a little bit of reading here, King. Uh, um, Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. Babusha. This is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 16. 1 through 16. 1 through 16. Sorry. And there shall come forth a rod, but... I mean, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, 
and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Also, brothers, how can you erect a government in captivity? Understand this. You're in captivity. You're subjected to laws. You're subjected to the laws of the land. What government are you establishing? Right? Think about this. Let's stop the foolishness. Let's stop playing games, right? And understand that you're being bamboozled and being deceived with those who come in sheep clothing, right? But in work, they're, they're ravening wolves, right? Come on. I... Verse three, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall be judged the poor and reprove with equity for meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breast of his lips shall he slay the wicked. So let me read that again. I, it says, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor. So righteousness, if you do wrong and you and you're suffering, in a sense, meaning that you have lack, you have less than what you need, with righteousness shall he judge the poor. Right? So just because you have lack don't mean that you're not going to get this work. Is other in other words, is what he's saying here, right? And reprove the iniquity of the meat of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. So this doesn't matter. You got wicked, poor people out there, right? Some people are poor because they are wicked, <laughs> right? So who are we to sit back and try to change the judgment that the Most High has put upon people? This is the reason why we have to know who we do good for. This is the reason why we need to know who, who we help and who we do this because we could be aiding the child of the devil or the child of the Hasatan, whatever you want to call it. Come on. I... Verse 5. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his wounds, and faithfulness the girdle of his rims. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and a calf, and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. So it says a little child shall lead them. This is the kingdom he's talking about. So if a little child shall lead them, why do you have brothers out there that's because they've been in the truth for a certain amount of years or stuff like that? You're bowing down to them. They must have the truth, right? They must have the truth. But listen, this movement has been going all on since the 40s and 50s and 60s, and it has not moved. It failed several, single t several times. And who has failed it? Who have let it fall? Could it be the elders? Could the elders have let it fall that many times? Could the elders that we call elders now could be the ones that separated and scattered the sheep? Right? Because all of these camps out here came from one. It came from one. It was scattered, it was tore down, it was broke down, and, and here we go sitting there letting the original people tell us what to do and not following after the um, descriptions of the Most High, but after traditions of men. Go ahead. Right. Verse 7, And the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones, shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. This is the government of Amashiach Yahawashai. This is the peace, the tranquility that comes with it when we have a righteous king sitting on the throne. 
There only can be one governor. Gover there can only be one governor, one leader in the government, right? There's not several of them, right? So it's going to come a time where the battle of the head is going to have to take place. We can say, no, we all brothers. We can, you can say that all you want to, but it's going to have to come a leader. Go ahead. I Verse 8. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the aphid, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cartridge. Then the cartridge, the cartridge, that's a serpent. So this is how the government, the government of Amashiach Yahawashai is going to be. The things that would normally tear us or kill us, we're going to be able to play with. We're going to be able to, to walk and, and lie next to without it harming us. That's the government that I'm looking for. Go ahead, King. Verse 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth that shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Mm. And in that day, there shall be root of Jesse. Salaki, it says in that day, meaning it's talking about a Pacific time. It's talking about a, 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 a time appointed, right? Go ahead. I... Verse 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people to which shall be Gentiles. Seek and his rest shall be glorious. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It says, in that day, there shall be root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall be a, a, a ensign of the people, Salaki. To it shall the Gentiles seek his rest, and shall it shall be glorious. So it's going to become a time once the Mashiach, the Habashai has come, and, and, and you're going to have the Gentiles cleaving or seeking peace and refuge and stuff like that. These are the people that is going to be our nursing fathers and nursing mothers and stuff like that. So why are we excluding them? Come on. Come on. I Verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day, second time to recover, the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria. 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 And from Egypt, and from Pethros, and from Cus, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an assign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth, the envy. Also of Ephraim, 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 shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim, um, shall not, it says Ephraim shall not uh, uh, shall not envy Judah. Judah shall not vex Ephraim, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hands upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, the Egyptians sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake with his hands over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men to go over dry shot. Verse 16, And there shall be a highway from the remnant of his people, which shall be left in Assyria, like as, like as it was in Israel in the day that they came up out of the land of Egypt. All right? Okay, from there, I, stay in Isaiah. I want you to go over to the book of Isaiah chapter 41, verses 10 through 15. Bible Bible Shai. Isaiah 41, 10 through 15. Just start it with you guys. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. 
be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will un uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed of confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. So why are we arguing and fussing? Why are we calling out our adversaries? Remember, we, we, we have to get this. We, 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 we have to get this. The people that is brought upon us is brought upon us from the most high. So when you're angry at the people that is ruling over you, you're basically saying that you're angry at the punishment that the Father has brought upon you. So why be angry at the people? Why be angry at the punishment? And, and keep it real and, and, and say that you don't, you're angry with the Father. Because he put them there. He put them in leadership. All right? Go ahead, huh? Verse 12, thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. So this is this is the ones that follow Hamash chapter Habashai, that follows the, the, the commandments of the Most High. We're in peace. We're not talking about Esau. We're not talking about... Uh, the Canaanites and none of that type of stuff. We are supposed to speak and bring the kingdom to our people. That's our job, right? Not caught up with the punishment because in, in order for us to get up out of this captivity, Israel has to come to a place of repentance. Go ahead. I Verse 13, for I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou warm Jacob. And ye men of Israel, I will help thee, says the Lord. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, behold, I will make thee a new sharp, threshing instrument, instrument. instrument. having teeth, thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them <coughs> small, and shall make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. So this is the judgment that's going to come upon the, 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 the people of wickedness, right? The people that oppress us. The people that op uh, uh, opposes the law of the Most High, because not only uh, remember two thirds of Israel is going to be put to death. So while we preach this 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 uh, uh, this mindset of uh, uh, Salakir, while we preach this mindset, we have to also remember that two thirds of Israel is going to be put to death. So everybody that preach Israel and and speak Israel that wear fringes and stuff like that is not all Israel. Wheat and tear is grown together. Understand that. How are you going to know them? By the fruit that they bear. Right? All right. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 6 and 6 through 8. Just say that scripture again. Romans chapter 8, 6 through 8. This is Romans chapter 8. Six through eight. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because. Slocky. It says, for to be carnally minded is death, right? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So, what I'm retaining from this particular scripture is. If I'm spiritually minded, I have life and I have peace, right? But to be carnally minded is death, destruction, war, famine, right? How can you say that you have the spirit of the most high, 
but that's all you speak is death. Right? Come on. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Salaki, the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh, for it is not subject to the law. This is the reason why we would not correct our brethren, that we fellowship with every Shabbat, that we call them, we, we, they, we call them brother. We don't want to correct them, right? Because they're in agreement with, me, with, 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 with our foolishness, right? But we'll go out in the streets and correct a brother that's in the streets that is spiritually, that is spiritually dead. They don't know the truth. We'll correct them. And you got the same brother carrying the same spirit sitting right next to you, holding the Bible. We got to do it together. We, we have to get it right. We have to get this right and we have to start correcting and start to weed out the foolishness in Israel. Go ahead. I'll just read that again. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be so. It can't be. So when, what happens is you have an awkward two brother, you sit there and you talk about him, you don't want to go to him, you, you, the foolishness that comes, the, 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 the law, when it comes down to utilizing the law, when it comes down to moving the way the law says to move, we become ignorant then. Right? We, come, we become ignorant, but we're so powerful warriors when we're in the street preaching, uh, teaching somebody that's, that's, that's biblically ig uh, um, illiterate. Them are the people that you're supposed to have compassion towards. Them are the people that you're supposed to sow seed and keep it moving and not argue with, right? These are the people. The scripture says in Isaiah, I think it's 28, and one, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression, oh. right? And the people, according to the most high, that my people are the people that follow the commandments, right? Come on, we got, we got it all twisted up. And because we're so stuck in traditions of man, and, 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 and um, that's the reason why every time you're, you're doing something good, there's a video. Every time you're giving somebody, there's a, a picture or a video, right? The Most High clearly tells us, do not do that. God, do what, uh, uh, beloved? Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry loud, spare not, lift up, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. The scriptures clearly tells us not to do that, but do we correct these brothers or these sisters when they blatantly do it on social media to gain membership and not the spirit? Right? Go ahead. Huh? Proceed. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. That's the reason why, and I'm, I'm going to go over to real quick. Uh, go to Amos chapter 6, I believe. Let me get there real quick. Amos chapter 5, start at verse 21 and take it down to uh, uh, 26. It says... Hold on, Slocky. This is the reason why the Most High put these scriptures out, because we refuse to follow the scriptures. We refuse to follow what the Most High tell us to do, how to treat our wives, how to treat our brethren, how to... If, if, if there comes a, a prop, The scripture even tell us that if you come to me and you bring in gifts... And you forget that you have an ought with your brother. Put your gifts at the altar and go make it right with them first. It's impossible for you to repent without making it right with the people that you done wronged. You can't. 
We think that just because we brush it off and, uh, okay, we cool, that you have to make it right, brother, sister, right? In order for you to have the peace of the Most High, for you to have the Spirit to dwell in you, because the Spirit is not dwelling without repentance first, right? Go ahead, I. This is Amos chapter 5, verse 21. Bring it out. I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. So, you, 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 you feast days and stuff like that, you dance in a party and you video and you making, making it seem like it's so righteous and the most high is there and stuff like that. Christ didn't move like that. Hamashiach did not move like that. Come on. 22. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Why? Because it's in vain. It's not sincerity and truth. It's in vain. Go ahead. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows, but let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. He says, but let judgment run down as the waters of righteousness as a mighty stream. Come on. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness? Forty years, O house of Israel. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Cham, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Come on, that's it. That's all we wanted from there. I just wanted to bring that out because we have to understand the Most High is not there. The Most High is not really dealing and stuff like that with a lot of these brothers and these sisters out here in falsehood, right? All right, I... Romans chapter Romans chapter 5 verses 1 and 1 through 15 So you're getting kind of quick with them uh, uh, them scriptures young king Say it again Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 4 Romans chapter 5 verse 1 Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Come on. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. We do what? We glory in tribulations. We what? We glory in tribulations. Come on. Also, knowing the tribulation worketh with impatience. So we glory in the tribulation. All oh, praises to Yahweh Baha Shiva Mashiach Yahweh Shai. We glory in that. All right? We understand that the Most High is going to put us through. The Most High is going to make us through. So why are we angry at people? Why can't we take that energy and that frustration that we, 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 we got towards the people that the Most High has brought upon us and funnel it into our own daggone household, number one, and then to our own camp or to our own congregation and get the people truly right and refuse to stand next to somebody that's dealing in their flesh. Right? Come on. Verse four, in patience, experience and experience hope. All right, all right, all right. Go over to the book of 14 verses 17 through 19. 14 verses 17 through 19. It says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Salaki. It says something very powerful there. It says, for the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So if this is supposed to be a rehearsal, right? Why not rehearse righteousness? 
Why not rehearse, rehearse peace? Why not implement them things in our, in our life? Because this is what the scripture saying that the kingdom of, of Yahweh is. Why you got hatred? Why are you teaching the hatred? Why are you teaching uh, brothers and sisters the frustration of, of traditions of men and the bigotry of camp doctrine, right? Because I'm pretty sure there's something that we're dealing with that we can get right. If you're not a hundred, if you, if you out there teaching the Teaching say that people are going to be put to death if they don't do this. You better make sure that you are 110% right. Because the same judgment that you want on that brother or that sister is the same judgment that you're going to get if you're not 100% right. Come on. Uh. Verse 18. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. What? For he that is these things serveth Christ. What things is he talking about? Righteousness and peace. Come on. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. What? Read it again. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. Uh-huh. And things wherewith one may edify another. How am I edifying another? You may, be, you may be justified with Esau or whatever the circumstances, whatever you want to preach, but what if you have an ignorant brother over here that doesn't know truth? You can cause one of these little ones to go astray by your mindset and your bigotry, right? Why do I know? Because I was once that. Why do I know? Because I once preached that. But when your eyes is open to the truth and understanding and the spirit and, and walking as Christ walked, right? Things shift. Go ahead. I Verse 20. For me, destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that men or eateth with offense. They eat it with offense. All right, I jump from there. Go to the book of, uh, uh, actually, go to the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 6 through 11. Matthew 7, 6 through 11. This is Matthew, chapter 7, 6 through 11. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Let they trample they, them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. That's why I don't argue and debate with these fools no more. And, you, and anybody that know me and been in truth, I will argue and debate all day long. I'm not doing that no more. You know why? Because if you don't want to believe, the scripture calls you a dog. You don't want to follow. He said, don't give that to them. The scripture tells you when you go into the city and you preach this, preach into the city, if they hear you not, shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving. He didn't tell you to stay in there and sit there and argue and fuss with them. He didn't tell you to do that. What are we doing? What are we doing? That's not how Christ walked. But we profess Christ. Remember, the kingdom is that was um, that that was bringing us righteousness and peace, right? Go ahead. Huh? Verse seven: Ask and it shall be given. You seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Uh -huh. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Come on. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? So if you, if you got brothers and sisters out there that, 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 that's hungry for the word, and they ask you for your understanding, or they may have a little understanding themselves, and they try to teach it, do you then give them a stone? Because that's what you're doing when you're arguing and fussing with them. 
You giving them a stone. You're supposed to give them the bread of life, not call them wicked because they're ignorant of what's going on. Your job is to get them in the classroom so you can cultivate the spirit that's in them, right? But you chase them away for a dag on YouTube video. So you can look powerful in the Lord. You chase them away for that. Right? Come on. I Verse 10. Or if he adds a fish, will he give him a serpent? Question. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? So... Is speculations is a condition that comes with you asking the father for something and him giving it to you. You have to then first treat your brethren like brethren and understand that people are not far along as you may seem to be. So you have to be patient with them because the scripture says Paul soweth and Apollos watereth. You understand what I'm saying? It's not your, but the most high is the one that gives the increase. You brothers is out there trying to water, sow water and give the increase for, for the, for the name of whatever the name of your camp is or whatever name of your congregation is, right? Sometimes it may take a whole year in order for a seed to be cultivated. It's a process that goes with, with uh, agriculture. You, you just don't plant the seed and water and sprout and then you can reap the fruit thereof. It's a process that goes with it. Look at your process. Look at where you came from and what you changed from and how long it took you to get into the knowledge that you gained. When you look at that, you're able to then look at the brother and the sister that may not be as knowledgeable as you are and really try to work with them and really deal with them as Christ dealt with them. Even the scribes and the Pharisees. Hamas got the house side didn't argue and fuss with him. He just gave him, he, he gave him certain scriptures and said it is written. Right? Come on. I Verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Okay, that's like that's it. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, 30. I ain't done a, I ain't done a lesson with my, my son in a while. It's kind of. We're kind of oiling up the machine. You feel me? <laughs> Matthew 28, 28. not verse 30. Actually, jump to uh, Psalms. Psalms 55, 22 to 23. Psalms 55, 22 to 23. Psalms 25. 22 and 23. Let me say it again. I'm up. Okay. Actually, Psalms chapter 25. Slacky. Like Psalms chapter 55. 20 to 23. It says, He has put force. His hands against such as be a peace with him. He has broken his covenant. Uh -huh. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn sword. You hear that? This is talking about brethren, and this is the reason why we have to try them. To see whether they're of the most high. This is the reason why we have to prove a friend. Because the scripture says. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil. Yet were they drawn swords. Right? Come on. Verse 22. Cast thy burden unto, unto the Lord. And he shall sustain thee. 
He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. That's right. Come on. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. So, this is the condition that the Most High is saying that he's going to bring upon the people that is coming against his saints. They already have destruction coming to them. Spend that time because, again, you may be trying to tell Esau, whatever, whatever their, their, their ultimate end, and you may draw some of your own people away. And then you're sitting there calling them wicked because they don't understand the way you brought it out because of the, the delivery was all wrong. Right? This is their judgment. We don't got to worry about that. Stop wasting time talking about your oppressors and your enemies and stuff like that. Stop warring against the punishment that the Most High has brought upon you because you're warring against Yahweh, right? And focus on yourself. That's why the Most High is calling Israel back as a nation to come back to these law, statutes, and commandments, right? So that we would not be put to death. So we would not be a part of that two-thirds of Israel that's going to get put to death. Right? Hebrews. Jump over to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. Hebrews 12, 14 what? 14 and 15. 14 and 15. This is Hebrews chapter 12, 14 through 15. Follow peace and with all men in holiness. Do what? Follow peace with all men and holiness. Only Israel. With men all men in holiness. You sure they don't say only Israel? All men in holiness. Come on. Without which no man shall see the Lord. What? Which no man shall see the Lord. So he says, follow peace with all men, but without no man to see the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. I go over to the book of Colossians chapter three, verses eight. Through 15. Got it. Uh, I'm having a little technical difficulties here. <laughs> I got you. I, Colossians chapter 3. I got you. Oh, you Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. And it reads, But now ye also put off all anger. This is the order. But now, so I'm going to read verse 7. In which ye also walk sometimes when ye live in them. But now ye also put off all things. Anger, wrath, malice, blaspheming, filthy communication out of your mouths. Right? Lie not one, one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old men and his deeds and have put on a new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcision, uncircumcision barbarian bond nor free but Christ is, is, is all and all put on therefore as the elect of Yahweh, holy and beloved, bows, mercy, kindness, humbleness, so my, uh, of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man 
have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also ye do ye, right? And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bonds of perf perfect perfection. And let the patience of Yahweh rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let Christ, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, and all wisdom teaching the abonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to Yahweh. So again, we have to understand this. If we put on Christ, if we put on the spirit, all of that anger, that mindset, that malice, that destruction, that, 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 that stuff that is not fruitful to nobody should be cast away. It should not be in you if you call yourself a follower of Christ. If you don't, if you call yourself a follower of Christ, you should not be out in the streets teaching that foolishness. You should not be arguing and fussing with Esau and bickering, fighting back and forth and all that type of stuff like that. You shouldn't be doing it. You should be teaching and preaching the kingdom. And that's what we're supposed to be preaching, that all men shall come to a place of repentance, right? I just, wanted, I just wanted to come on here because if you don't have peace, if you don't speak peace, you'll get people that think like you. You feel what I'm saying? But that's not going to be for the kingdom. We I mean, just clearly read in the scriptures that the kingdom is righteousness and peace. Right? So if you are angry, frustrated Israelite, you're going to be an angry frustrated Israelite in hell if you do not renew your mind and take on the spirit of Amashiach Yahawashai. Right? He corrected the church, but he also gave the church peace. Right? And that's what, that's, that's the gospel. That's what we're ordered to preach. That's, that's what Christ told his disciples to go out and teach. Teach the kingdom. Teach the Gospels. That's what he told us to go and preach. That's what he ordered us to go preach. On the um, Mount of Transfiguration, when, when, when uh, um, Christ showed up with Abraham and Moses, uh, Salaki, I, Elijah and Moses, the disciples wanted to erect a, a temple and three temples for Elijah, for Moses, and for Christ. The voice of the Most High through the Spirit, right? Cain says, this is my well-beloved son, who I am well pleased, hear ye him, right? We have to understand in these last days, there's going to come a lot of scoffers. And I'm going to go back to my, my, my uh, one of my favorite scriptures in the book of Ezekiel. I'm a, Ezekiel chapter 13, I'm going to read it verse 6 down to 8. It says, then ye have seen... Seeing, talking, let's talk about the false prophets of Israel. Then having seen vanity and lying divination, wherein the Lord has, where the Lord says, and the Lord has not sent them, and have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Right? Y'all know damn well. Y'all know it for a fact that it is not true brotherhood. Y'all just going along with the machine. Y'all going on with what feels good and what sounds good and all that type of stuff like that. True brotherhood corrects. True brotherhood brings brothers into repentance. Not these hidden sins and you sitting around the congregation and everybody's wicked as hell and nobody wants to rebuke nobody. And then when you, this is a note when you know you have a, a, somebody who has a spirit on them. When you go to correct them, the first thing they want to do is pack up and peel. They want to pack up and leave because they refuse to be corrected with the scriptures, right? What are you running for? You're running from the spirit. That's what you're running for. Again, uh, brothers and sisters that may not be learned in the truth, that may not be 
as strong as brothers and uh, as strong as certain sisters. I charge all of y'all, keep the faith, keep the commandments of the Most High. The things that's on you that may not be of the Most High, get it off because the day of the Lord is at hand. And we, he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. And this is including myself, my household. We work viciously daily to make sure that that, make sure that that is actually being ironed out. Still got work to go. Let's be transparent. But we're not like we were yesterday. And with that, I love all of y'all with the love of Mamashiach, Yehabashah. I say greetings and blessings again to uh, 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 um, the 12 tribes of Israel that scattered abroad, Shabbat Shalom, as Shabbat. We give all praises and glory to Yahweh, and we do so in the name of his son, only his only begotten son, Yehabashah, Hamashiach. And with that, we say Shabbat Shalom. Shalom.